Hello YouTube and welcome to a tutorial on how to mine Litecoins with either your CPU or your GPU, depending on which one you want to use. Now Litecoins are cryptocurrency based on hashes generated from um, uh, people around the world mining with their hardware in order to create that hash. That hash is kind of like the secret key to the block and depending on how many people are mining that hash is harder and harder to get or a lower and lower range of hashes is available or possible to be hit. Uh, when you mine, you are generating those hashes, and the more people that mine, uh, the more hashes are generated per second. The Litecoin uh, network automatically tries to balance it so that one Litecoin, or one block, which has 50 Litecoins in it, will be mined every two and a half minutes. Every uh, 2,016 blocks, uh, there will be a retarget where the difficulty changes. So if you have a difficulty of one, and you have one kilo hash, you will generate one block in 50 days, estimated. Now, since these are completely random tickets, you could get 100 blocks in half a second. It's technically possible uh, if you could generate, you know, 100 block, 100 hashes in half a second. But however, um, you're not looking at um, any kind of progress, any kind of meter. There's no, oh, you've mined 20,000 hashes so far, and you have to mine 80,000 for uh, 0.001 litecoins or anything like that. Uh, paper share kind of works like that as far as how many hashes you generate. Uh, and this is the only Litecoin pool that I know of that generates um, revenue by paper share that allows you to use the paper share model instead of the um, kind of distributed based on hashing rate model. You find a block, divide it evenly by hashing power that people contributed, then send out the Litecoins or Bitcoins or whatever you're mining. So uh, mining, when you mine, it generates a bunch of hashes. 20, 20 kilo hashes will be 20,000 hashes per second. Um, that's a pretty average speed for your average uh, CPU. Now anything like a uh, GPU is going to mine a lot faster, however since script, uh, the algorithm that Litecoin uses to mine is a lot more memory intensive, CPUs have more power uh, in Litecoin mining than they do in Bitcoin mining. So if you're going to do CPU mining, definitely take a look at Litecoins. So at any rate, and Litecoins currently have an exchange rate of 0 0.001 for Litecoins per Bitcoin or Bitcoins per Litecoin, sorry. So uh, about a thousand Litecoins is going to be a little over one Bitcoin. So that's about 20 blocks. So anyway, and then you also have that four thrown in there. So actually it's it's less than that. But basically 0.0014 Bitcoins per Litecoin is the current exchange rate as of 6-30-2012. And uh, CPU mining is done very easily. Uh, on litecoinpool.org they have links to a 64-bit or 32-bit software package. Here I have it downloaded here. This is the 64-bit version. I'm going to just extract it. You have to extract it first or else you will have issues with running it. Now up here I have uh, Miner D, which looks like an application, and Script Miner. Now make sure you have your either a Litecoin uh, wallet, downloaded Litecoin QT installed, which will also come with uh, Litecoin D, or uh, get a wallet from a website, wallet.litecoin.in. Yeah, lightco.in, spelling Litecoin, and uh, you can basically solve a captcha like this. It's like a picture captcha kind of thing, and get an e-wallet. And basically, this gives you an online wallet. You don't have to worry about any kind of uh, wallet management or anything like that. They do it for you. I happen to kind of I own the server that hosts this, but I don't um, really. I know the person and I work with them on this and. Uh, it's pretty cool. I do the little daily Litecoin payout, which is also cool. Uh, it's not mining at all, but you can basically uh, once a day submit this address and get a free Litecoin. So it's fun. Uh, the balance that shows how many Litecoins you have. Five confirms. Five confirms means five blocks after you've sent it. That um, assuming the first block after you sent the transaction, it was included. And blocks are basically um, just a storage container that one when mined give you 50 Litecoins and to store all the transactions since the last block. And um, so block you know, 1000 stores all the transactions that happen between block 999 and block 1001. Uh, so when you download the blockchain, at first when you download and install your Litecoin client, uh, it is downloading all the transactions that have ever happened on the network so that it knows how much money that wallet has. So you see in this wallet it has 2136 point blah 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 Litecoins and in transactions, it shows a list of all the transactions you've done. And also, when you mine any Litecoins, it will look like have it here somewhere. It'll be about it'll be an amount of fifty, and it'll be positive, of course. 
it will look like this mind and address not applicable and that will basically add 50 Litecoins to your balance that you can then spend to send coins you click on the send coins you enter Litecoin address and amount receive coins you just send them your address and then they on their end put their address in here and put the amount put your address in here and then they put the amount they want to send to you so anyway back to mining uh, this you can use this address here or you can download the Litecoin client to get an address and when you create your litecoinpool.org account and you go to my account uh, and you go to payments actually uh, it'll show what address you pay out to and here you can change settings for what payment address yeah, you have your Litecoin sent to and you can have an automatic payout where once it reaches that much within uh, every two times a day they kind of refresh this and send out the Litecoins for that or you can go to payments and demand an instant payout assuming you have more than one Litecoin to pay out one or more so anyway once you have your let's go back to this once you have your script miner uh, downloaded and extracted let's go into here this is the CPU miner application Double click on script miner here, and you'll see this thing that looks, um, and I already have some settings in here. Um, something that it's pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. You want to set the number of threads equal to the number of cores on your CPU. Scan time, leave it five. RPC server, litecoinpool.org. If you want, you can go to help here, and it'll show you how to set this up. Um, litecoinpool.org, like that. Port 9332, your username, point one, and then your password is one. You have your port here. Any additional parameters, don't worry about that. Start mining. And you will see at some point your speed will change from not applicable to something like around 30 kill hashes a second for four threads. This is running on an Intel Core i5 2500K without any overclocking currently. And I can hit around 25 to 30 kill hashes per second with it. That's, um, well, it's not great. Every time you see the share accepted, that means you just got the current going rate for a share which is 0 0.00038648 litecoins per share so you can just kind of each one of these is worth that many litecoins so they add up eventually uh, a faster way to mine litecoins though is with your GPU uh, there are two main brands of GPU NVIDIA and ATI or um, ATI which is made by AMD advanced um, micro devices or whatever and uh, basically AMD processors are going to AMD well, AMD CPUs will generally be a little bit faster at Litecoin mining, interestingly enough, but AMD GPUs are going to be a lot faster. So let's go back to here, and let's extract Reaper, which is the GPU miner application. Extract to Reaper, there we go. And let's just enter this folder here. Now, reaper.config here is going to have your configurations for Reaper as a whole. Reaper is made to mine Bitcoins, Litecoins, and Solidcoins. It was, it's even available on the Solidcoin wiki. This is where you download it. wiki.solidcoin.info slash wiki slash Reaper. Click on this one, 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on what system you have. If you don't know, choose 32-bit. Uh, assuming you're running Windows. If you're running uh, Linux, they also have uh, Linux, and they have the source code that you can compile yourself. If you don't feel comfortable running this program on your computer without seeing what's in the, uh, basically, code first. So uh, delete mine Bitcoin and delete mine solid coin. So you're only mining Litecoin here. Then save. Everything there is good. Uh, then uh, you only have to worry now about your Litecoin.conf file, Litecoin configuration file. Your host is going to be, uh, for this example, litecoinpool.org. Your port, 9332. 9332. Username is for uh, Vorkshulk.1 and your password is well my password is 1 now uh, for this user and there's nothing someone can do if they have your username and your password like this if they have your username and password for the site that's a problem but if they have your password for your miner all they can do or yeah for your worker all they can do is mine for you which isn't really the end of the world for you you just get free Litecoins not a big deal work size leave at 256 you can also try 128 to see your performance threads per GPU 1 or 2 Aggression is how strong, how aggressive the program is, um, what priority basically it sets its work at. So, the higher aggression, the uh, more ha the higher of a hash rate you're going to get, and the laggier your desktop is going to be. So, at something like 18 on my 5970 in this computer, I'm going to get around 550 kill hashes uh, at aggression 18 to 19. At aggression something like 10, it'll be a lot lower hash rate, but I can actually use my computer while it's mining generally.
So let's let it compile the kernel. That could take a couple minutes. And uh, in the meantime, let me explain a little bit about the script algorithm and what that means for the miner. Script algorithms use more memory than uh, SHA-256. So on your GPU, if you do overclocking, you're going to want to clock your memory high and not clock your GPU too high. Uh, your engine speed can stay at, you know, for 5970, my engine speed goes to only about 820. My memory speed, I clock at 1,100. So as you can see here, it's mining at... Uh, and it just got a long pull. Long pull is saying, hey, there's a new block. You need to change what you're hashing on, uh, essentially. So it's running at about 63 kilo hashes. That's not very fast at all for a GPU. I mean, it should be running at 550 if you're going to leave it as a dedicated miner. So that's when you'd up the aggression more. But leaving it at this, I can actually do the tutorial and use my desktop so I could, you know, um, browse the web or check email or whatever. Uh, you're not going to want to really do gaming while this is running. Uh, just naturally because it will kind of slow down and this will go to a really low hash rate and your game will kind of freeze every once in a while and just not fun. But anyway, that's how you mine Litecoins with Reaper on your GPU. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, it is going to run a lot slower than an AMD GPU or ATI GPU of the same price point. For example, I have a 560 Ti as well on the shelf. It's not installed in this computer right now. And uh, that thing, while its price point is around 220 to 250 dollars, it can mine at about 80 kilo hashes a second. This 5970 cost me almost $400, and it can run at 550 kilo hashes a second, plus more if you overclock more, but then it becomes a little bit unstable. So let's talk about overclocking real quick. If you have uh, either Catalyst Control Center, which automatically installs with the drivers, or MSI Afterburner or whatever. Currently I have a diamond card, but MSI Afterburner still works with it just fine. Open that up. Actually, no. We're going to use Catalyst Control, because that's what everyone will have. Performance. AMD overdrive. You may want to enable manual fan control and put it at something like 80 as when you're overclocking your VRM temperatures go way up. You can download a program GPU-Z from Tech Power Up Limited and this allows you to uh, basically um, watch what your GPU temperatures are doing. Now your GPU core temperature is shown here and here and also uh, 5970 is a two GPU card so you can choose which GPU you want to look at. The first GPU is going to be the one that has uh, higher hash rates, or not higher hash rates, higher temperature, sorry. VDDC, these are the temperatures you got to watch for your VRM. You don't want those to go over 120, and if you can keep them under 90, that's great. Uh, so you may want to turn your fan up to 80 or 90 percent in order to do overclocking. Now here you can see I have an overclock. Uh, the defaults are 725 and 1000. I can overclock to 830, say, and clock my memory to 1100, and it will stay fairly stable. Uh, for a while. Now if I clock this a little bit higher, say uh, 1150, uh, you will see an increase in hashing performance. However, uh, you may uh, notice both an increase in power consumption, an increase in heat, and as well, that's not both, that's three things, uh, an increase in the instability of the system. So it'll be less stable and is more likely to crash. And when it crashes, I mean, no big deal, you restart the computer, but it can be detrimental if you're trying to mine overnight, and it crashes an hour into it, you lost seven hours of mining, assuming you sleep a good eight hours. So here's Reaper uh, with my new overclock. Let's run it again with a slightly higher overclock here. And as you can see, the GPU hash rate is going to be right around the same, but it's going to be just slightly higher now, because we did do an overclock on one card. However, um, sometimes when you run it a second time after running Reaper, uh, it does tend to be a little bit slower. So, uh, and also you can see in the Reaper interface here, let me show you this again. These shares, 2 colon 0, or 6 colon 0, 8 colon 0. Uh, this 10 right here is how many shares you submitted that are valid. This 0 is how many that are stale. Stale means they were hashed on a block and then the block changed and you submitted them anyway. Uh, Litecoinpool.org does pay for stales. However, many pools uh, do not care whether it's um, whether you know how the stale happened. They're not going to accept any stales, so that number will uh, every once in a while increment, and that'll be the only thing that's incrementing for like a couple seconds. Then it'll switch back over to the other one, and that's because it just got a long pull or an LP. Uh, long pull enabled pools will give you higher um, higher um, valid to stale ratio, just simply because you get the new block information faster. So let's close out this. As you can see, it's jumped up to around our old hashing rate. Uh, this is only one card overclocked. I have to go in here and do the same thing to this card to have them both run at that speed. MSI Afterburner automatically changes both cards. So apply. I think that's what I said over here. Oh, 1150, whatever. So basically, that's how you uh, mine using either Reaper or CPU Miner.
uh, strip miner GUI, and th uh, those are the downloads. And so, thank you for joining me, and I will do a solo mining tutorial in, in coming days.